Right, hello guys. Sorry about that. Uh, again, Facebook is playing silly buggers with me tonight, again, as usual. Um, but we're on now. Um, <laughs> happens. It happens. Facebook Live. I, although, again, uh, it has happened in the past. Uh, people, that, um, that there might be spirits uh, within the... Uh, obviously the mobile stopping us from going live but um <laughs> uh, i'm just going to wait just for a few uh, just for a few minutes just until we can get uh, a few more people um joining the page hopefully you can hear me okay um yeah for some reason it does it's it's plain silly buggers it obviously when i do my lives it goes to my personal uh, page and then it broadcasts from there uh, which we don't want because obviously uh, all my members that are on my group are uh, un 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 unable to see it or unable to view it but once I'm on my group page, then people can view it. So um, we're just going to give it a couple more, uh, couple more minutes, and then we'll, we'll get Charlene, uh, who's going to be my guest tonight. Uh, thoroughly looking forward to uh, to this chat with her. Um, good evening, Joanne. Good evening, everyone else that's coming in. Uh, what else would you want to be doing on a Thursday night uh, to, to actually come on and join me uh, on a chat show? Um, this is unfortunately going to be the last uh, live chat that um, that I'm going to have this year um obviously for personal reasons uh, i'm actually relocating uh because i'm currently based in oxford and i'm going to be relocating to worcestershire uh, and that's going to be happening towards the end of this month uh and then i will be restarting uh, again over um restarting in the new year um because i want to get obviously november and christmas over and done with uh and then we've got um, some some really really um high profile guests uh coming on joining us um next year which I'm thoroughly looking forward to. Uh, it's really exciting stuff. Uh, I've got quite a few uh, ghost hunts coming up in that period of time as well as uh, I should be doing lives from there as well. Okay, we're, we're gonna get things um, kicked off. I'm gonna obviously invite Charlene into the conversation and we will get things going because I do tend to babble on a little bit. Well, thanks for everyone that's joining again tonight. In for a real treat with this one. Uh, good evening, Nats. Uh, good evening, Michael. Uh, I've just sent you the. Uh, ah, here we go. Let the spirits stop this. We want this chat this evening. Uh, that's what we want. Bear with us. It will happen. <laughs> Hopefully, Charlene will be joining me um, very shortly. Hopefully, at the moment, she will be um, coming on. But. Um, Everyone's had a good Thursday. Ah, hello there. Hiya. Hi, Hiya. Hi, Mark. Are you all right? That's not too bad. I, every time when I want to do a live, for some reason, <laughs> uh, it plays up. But, but thank God we've got it going at the moment. Um, well, I, where I would like to start with you, um, Charlie, when did, did it, when did it all start for you, obviously getting the interest uh, in, in, into the actual paranormal and, and ghost hunting and stuff? Um, well, I've always had an interest, always. My mum always made me watch, you know, ghost stories and supernatural programmes and things like that. But it didn't really, really kick off for me um, until 2012, which was when my dad passed away. Right. Um, during his passing, I experienced quite a few things and I couldn't explain it and I still can't to this day. And it... And what had happened, I was due to get married that year and he obviously didn't make my wedding. No, right. And he, there was a picture took at my wedding and by a friend. And it was, you know, like all the guests coming in. Yes. Um, settling down and stuff. And yeah. she took this picture in, in the church and she sent it me. And I was just scrolling through him one day and there was like an orb on it. And I didn't really pay too much attention. I thought it was like a light reflection or something. Right. But something kind of said to me, you need to look at that picture again. And, and I looked at it again and I zoomed in and I could see what appears to look like my dad stood right. okay. at the altar. Yeah, yeah, Facing yeah. for me. Right, right. Oh, wow. And the funny thing was, is, is that his picture was actually at the back, right at the back of the um, church, because I wanted to take him there with me for my wedding. Um, so yeah, so when I seen that picture, it right. made me question things somewhat and I wanted to explore it some more. 
Yeah, yeah, it does, doesn't it? I mean, I mean, especially with me. I mean, I, I mean, I had a, I had an experience when I was very young, uh, when I was about eleven years old. I, where I used to live in my parents' house yeah, in, in, in a small cottage, um, and I had an experience where I heard a lady's voice, and, and I still remember as, as if it happened yesterday. And I was lying in bed. I was awake. I wasn't dreaming. I know. I knew I was completely awake at the time. But I just heard this lady's voice, and it was saying "Lady Jane," but it was very silent. But but we used to have a, like a, like a stairwell, which which used to go up onto the landing, and my and my bedroom was right next to the landing, and it was quite a long landing as well. And mm -hmm. I, I remember looking at the wall, and I was thinking, I'm hearing this lady's voice. I mean, it can't. It's really. It was really weird, but it was very silent. Then it started to get louder and louder and louder. And it was as if, you know, I didn't really want to turn around because I knew that, that whoever this, this, this woman was that was calling out this name was stood right next to the bed. And it, and it, fr it frightened me. And, I, and, it, and, it, and it kind of questioned, you know, I thought, what, what is that? What, you know, and I've always been fascinated since, I've ever, since I had that experience um, when, when I was 11 years old. It just, mm -hmm. it, you know, I've just been so fascinated by it. And obviously, when Most Haunted started back, uh, as everyone knows, back in 2002, it, it, it was great because, because because people were taking it on a kind of a serious kind of, kind of mm. don't, don't you think? I think it opened the door to it. Um, I mean, I can remember watching Most Haunted and thinking, you know, wow, um, well before my dad passed. Yeah. Um, and I think that opened the door to the field a lot more and people started looking in a lot more into you know into the aspects of it so yeah I think most haunted to some degree has done some help yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's kind of kicked kicked kind of kicked it all off but obviously I know yeah. that, you've got, um, that you've got your own paranormal company as well I mean how, how, did, how did that all start because I know because it, it, it is quite a big thing isn't it because obviously um, getting people to join and stuff like that. When did that start? Mm -hmm. um, I started Paranormal Hauntings last August. And from last August, it just absolutely bloomed. Absolutely. Um, I mean, we're, I'm, I'm at nearly 130k members yes, in my group. Wow. Um, and I don't really know how that's happened, but it has. And I started my page only in March, and that's touching nearly twenty thousand now. So yeah. it's it's growing. It's it's yes, growing, right, yeah. and it's it's not that old really. But no. I have been in the community quite a while, so people do know me from various other teams and stuff. Yeah. So that does help, you know. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I mean, obviously, uh, lo locations as well. I mean, is it locations that are, that are based all around you know, the UK, uh, like places like Drake's Lake Tunnels and, and places like you, you do all those? Yeah, yeah, but I'm, I'm private team. Not I'm not an event company, oh. so I am I'm a private team. Um, it's it's mainly just me really, but I work with other people in the field as well. So at the minute, I'm currently working with Spiritus Sanctus and Red Ridge and Project Paranormal. Oh, I right. tend to venture out and work with other private investigators, which I really enjoy. Yeah, yeah, I, really I think it's it. it's good to get that um, that actual input um, from other teams as well because because I, I'm a believer, and I know a lot of guests um, that I've had on on my show that it's kind of we all want the same thing, don't we? We all want to mm -hmm. prove that, that paranormal and the experiences that people have are actually real, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, um, I mean, the, the community itself can be quite bitter and people say that power unity don't exist and, and stuff. But I think I think it does. Yeah, I would say it does. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. like you say, we're, we're, we're all trying to get that, that, that proof that it does exist, that, that you know. I have actually been seeing as well, um, um, Charlene, that you've been, um, you're, you're doing a lot of documentary work as well, am I right? Yes, yes, I, uh, yes, I've, I've done previous ones before, um, I've worked with the Anguish Man painting, I don't know if you know about that one. Yes, yeah. Um, World's Most Haunted Painting, I just, I set up the old interview for, for that, um, I actually didn't actually meet it myself, but I set the interview up for it, um, yeah. and then, I did the cage as well, a documentary on that. That was a, some time ago, but then I've just started 
to do more. Okay. Um, so the other weekend we went to the Willington Tunnels in Liverpool. Um, fantastic location yeah. and is available for teams to hire. Okay. Um, it's got such a fantastic history and a mystery to it. And the reports that the were well, the trustees there because it's not owned. They do it in their own time, digging these tunnels out. Yeah. Um, the reports from them is fantastic what they've witnessed and seen and we we only did like a three minute um visual down in one of the paddington tunnels okay. and the, and some of the things we got through on the itc during that session was very impressive i don't know if you've seen on my page but i did like a little clip of um we got was getting the flowers and the spell of flowers coming through and then when we'd stop, Lynn came back down to come and get us. We went back up and she says, I forgot to tell you. Um, I've, I've been smelling flowers down there and stuff. And it was just like, oh, my God, what? You know, and the confirmation for, from, for that was just, we was just gobsmacked. It was fantastic. Yeah. But yeah. that location, it really needs to be put on the map. And, and it's like little locations like that that I like to do little documentaries on because I really think they should be out there. I mean, that place is what? It's sixty pound to hire. Really? Oh wow! Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of money, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But obviously, well, it... places like that, and obviously new places, uh, are getting quite scarce now, aren't they? I mean, there are a lot yeah. of them. There are, aren't there? Uh, and and they and they've all got their own like, little stories. Um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, obviously where I'm from uh, in Oxford, uh, there's there's a place I, I I did a live on 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 my page, and it was from Hampton Gate Manor. Uh, and it's, it's a ruin. Uh, it, obviously, there was a fire that was involved in it, uh, and, and, a, and a train crash in the 1800s uh, on Christmas Eve. Uh, and again, okay, you, you, you can look at it on Google and, uh, and stuff like that, but it must have been, you know, there were about 35 people that actually died uh, in that cr in that crash, and we're, we're, we're taken to this 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 manor house. So, um, the, the, you know, history history and ghosts and hauntings. I mean, they all go together, don't they? They do. They do, and it's like little locations like that can bring the most evidence, I think. You know, it's like little locations that are not overworked. They yeah. Can, they can really, you know, they really come and produce some interesting results, I think. Yeah, mm. yeah. I did see um, I, I did <laughs> see a, a recent video of yours, and I, I don't know where it was. Was it, was it at a hotel or something? Um, was it in the week? It was in the week, yes. Yes, it was, yeah, it was. It was, it was very it good. Was, yes, it was at hotel in um, Newark, right. and um, it, it was it was so quirky. It was so lovely, you know. Um, we'd actually turn up to the wrong one because there was there was three that, that named the same. Okay. Um, we eventually got there, and we was just like, "Wow!" When we got there, right? It was, you know. Um, have you ever been to the Falstaff experience? Uh, no, I haven't, but I have I have heard a lot of people saying it's very good, and I, 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 it is on my list to do. Well, it was very much like that place. The the quirkiness of it and how everything's quite petite and stuff. Yeah. And um, it, it's got links to King Charles. He, that was where he spent his last night before he was in prison. Um, yeah, imprisoned. So, yeah. yeah, it was it was really. Uh, it was a good night, but I wish we'd have stayed longer. But we are going back there to investigate some more. Um, we think we've caught an EVP there as well. And we, we did actually hear a woman's voice, which was off the live, unfortunately. But I was doing some uh, mirror scaring and um, we, we heard a woman next to Chrissy go, hmm, like that. And um, Simon had got on his camera from a few hours previously, the same kind of tone. And mm, again in the same room, so it yeah. Um, yeah. We've been looking that at the the last few days, and yeah, we was but quite impressed. Yeah, but it's great, isn't it? I mean, I mean, I know it's uh, uh, you know through myself as well. I uh, on investigating uh, the amount of hours that you have to spend uh, going through all the videoing, uh, uh, yeah. all the keys and stuff. It can it can get quite tired, but there again, if you get that small. Um, bit of evidence. Uh, it's worth it. it. That bug, like, oh, I want to go back again. I want to go back again. Yeah. I want to go do it again. Uh, yeah, it's 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 quite incredible, really, when that happens. 
Um, obviously, with, with with locations, um, Charlene, what what what's one of the what's one of the bestest ones that, that you've been on the bestest evidence that you've caught as as far? One near you, actually, Oxford oh. Castle. Oh yes, that's where I've had my most interesting night, I would say. Um, and it's very little what happened, but it it's it was. It was interesting, and basically we was walking down the stairs, you know, of the old part of the castle. Is that the bit if where you go into the tower? Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. It's got levels, isn't it? That's right, yeah. Well, we'd been doing a vigil on there, in there, and the rest of them had gone downstairs, and we was walking down the stairs, and there was me, well, there was my mum in front, there was me, and there was um, the historian, but he was quite quite a bit behind. He was just locking the door behind and just coming down with us. And as we walked up the stairs, you know, we as we walked down the stairs, I heard um, an hello in, like, um, a London accent, but right. quite a distance away. Mm. And I just looked, and my mum turned around to me and looked, and then I heard it say in my my hair as I was going down as well. So it like passed my mum and said it in her ear, and then passed me and said it in my hair. And I turned around to to the historian at the back and said, "Was yeah. that you?" But he was he was he was right up, and this was the hair in my ear, and we both heard it. And he said, "That wasn't me, but I did hear it. It was that loud." Yeah. Um. And that was probably the you know we spent 55 pounds to go on that investigation with a team right okay. each and mm -hmm. it was worth the 55 pounds just to yeah. hear that voice because yeah. it just come out of nowhere yeah. just thin air you know and yeah it was it was worth it just to yeah. to get because that yeah obviously, um charlie <laughs> when when things happen uh like that when you're not expecting it uh mm. i say this obviously the viewers uh, that are watching that have never been on a ghost hunt before. It's that, it is scary, isn't it? I mean, it, it, yeah. it's scary. It frightens me. I mean, to the point where... I, I, it don't I'm, scare I'm, me I'm, anymore. Everyone yeah. thinks I'm, I'm silly, yeah. but it don't scare me no more. No? There, there's only a, few, only a few locations where it will make me feel edgy. Right. Um, it's got... It's got a... Um, like a darker feel to it if you like yeah. um but but that that didn't that experience there didn't actually scare the life out of me like, oh my god it was more like a wow you know because yeah. i'd heard the voice oh, yeah. but um it, it didn't right. scare me to to hear that it was it's like a confirmation that like something more is out there for me yeah 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 um yeah. <laughs> but when it happens to me i mean i i'm totally like if there's a place I shouldn't go into, uh, then I then I go into it, uh, you know, and do it, um, and then I'll probably like regret that I did it, you know, was thinking about ever doing it. But um, but the one for me, um, I mean, one of my favourites is um, Drake's Lake Tunnels. I don't know where you have, have you mm. been. Like, I've I, been three times. Yeah, I, it's I, that's what that I've had an interesting uh, hunt there as well before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you wouldn't want to get lost in there. Let's put it this way, and. <laughs> I lose a torch because uh, even in the daytime, and nighttime, it's just pitch black in there. Uh, and I've had two, I've been three times, and the both times that I've been, um, my, my experiences um, were absolutely uh, amazing. The one was uh, I heard a disembodied uh, sigh that was next to me. Uh, I couldn't explain it. There was no one else with me, it was just me on my own. Uh, and I saw some sort of mist. I've caught it on camera as well. I, I always put some of my stuff on YouTube. It's um, funny you say that because when we went, we seen a mist. We seen like an amber light flash. We heard a woman scream, and then we seen a mist. Yeah, go yeah, that's down. Like, yeah, yeah. It was kind of like yeah. like smoky, but but very yeah, like a... very thin and wispy. Yeah, um, yeah. And it did it did terrify me at the time, but but there again, like you say, when things happen to you like that, you, you just think to yourself, well. That was something. I've caught something. I need to know what it is. I need to know what it, what's caused it. But you, you, yeah, you never get the answer. So it's kind of it's it's kind of frustrating. But but again, it it gives you that buzz and it and it makes you want want more and and to, and to you know to get more. And the other thing that happened at Drake's Lake was um, 
disembodied whistles. Um, I don't know mm. if you experienced whistles there, but but when I went with, I, um, I don't think we did. Not whistles. Um, no. Yeah, but this. But week, I tell you what, we right. did some table tipping there. Yeah. And I'm normally um, skeptical of table tipping. Um. But I used to do it then, them days, because we're talking a few years ago now. But we, we kind of said, all right, because it was going, it was shaking a bit. We kind of said, right, let's everyone take our hands off. And we all had our hands there. Yeah. And the table was still... Was it still swaying. going? Oh, my God. And you know what? It, it, we're, we're talking six years ago, so I wasn't as involved as what I am now. Right, And okay. I didn't have a camera with me because it was an event. Yeah. And we were just all kind of stood there like, oh, my God, the table is rocking on its own. So, you know, everyone would always say, oh, I'm dead sceptical of table tipping and blah, blah, blah. But I would have never knock it just because of that experience, you know. Right. Um, like I say, we all took our hands off it and no one was around it. And it was only going slightly, but it was right. still going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, it's that, that was interesting. Yeah, yeah. Because there's, there's, there's so many ways. I mean, I mean again, I've, I've done table tipping in the past. Um, and yeah, you know, and instead of putting your hands pretty much like that on the table, we were doing it the other way. Yeah. So we, we were hardly touching it. And again, you know, you ask, and then obviously it starts rocking and tilting and stuff. And then, and then I'm kind of like there doing this, you know, <laughs> isn't anybody kicking it or moving it with their feet? But, but uh, yeah. yeah, you do, don't you? You just do. It's just, it's just no. one of those things. But, um, but no, yeah, it's. Um, it's quite incredible when when things like that happen. Um, obviously, what what other equipment um, do you like using, um, Charlene, when you're out on uh, investigation? Um, well, I do like my ITC. I am a bit of a bug for my ITC, so yeah. I, I like to experiment with with it. And it 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 gets a lot of criticism, and I don't understand why. Because how many people do you know that have said? They've had electrical equipment get interfered with and they've thought it, it's been paranormal. So phones, telephones, you know, stereos, yeah. radios, all that kind of thing. We've all, there is a lot of reports where people have said that their electrical equipment goes, goes funny or, or something or words produced out of it and whatnot. So obviously with ITC, the theory is, is that You've got an app and it's got banks in it and it's got words in it, okay. So the theory is that the spirit can somehow tap into that device and manipulate it to produce yeah. what they want to say. Yeah. So based on that theory of that, I, and with people's experience from experiencing things, you know, with electrical, what it, it might make sense why they might be able to tap into it and manipulate it, you know, and... I don't completely not to knock it on the head because we've had some fantastic results through using it. Mm. Um, and if you can get intelligence on it yeah, without, right. without trying to make the answers fit, if you like, mm. you know, if you can get intelligence come through, say, what's this, what's that? Or what's your name? Or, you know, did you, do you haunt here? And it says their name and you, and you get intelligence that, to me is interesting and yeah that's why i do like to use itc even though it, it, it does get yeah, yeah because it's I, an app but yeah I mean, I mean a lot of people um obviously say yeah well it's it, it's the radio uh, and stuff like that i mean mm. th th there is print um that i have been and i have used uh the itc uh, device and there's a lot of swearing on it now <laughs> swearing you can't do on the radio you just no. you just it. so how does people explain that when that happens do you understand yeah do you understand what i mean it's yeah i suppose they'd say it was stray signals coming in from other mm. other things it could be I, I, i'm assuming they'd say they would debunk it as that but like you say it's meant to work just on the radio so and swearing isn't allowed on the radio so to get that through it just makes it interesting don't it oh it does it does yeah yeah I mean, obviously, um, other investigations as well. I mean, do you do um, do you do, do ruin places as well as? Do I do what? Sorry. Do you actually do ruins as well? Uh, instead. Oh yeah, 
yeah we, we, I do a lot of urban exploring and um, so I go to a lot of sites that are abandoned and not really been investigated at all and so we, we do tend to go and explore them locations and tend to tie in the investigation with that as well because things can happen walking around there and you think okay yeah what, what's this about then you'll hear bangs and knocks and stuff so we'll go and investigate the uh, abandoned buildings that, that not many teams or no teams have investigated at all and one example of that was um, we went to William Percy um, a few weeks ago and obviously William Percy has been investigated and stuff but at the back of William Percy on the land is a chalk works which is an abandoned I don't think many people actually know about it, but it is actually abandoned. You do have to get through all the bushes to get to it. Yeah, yeah. And Simon had been previously and, and he'd said he took some, some other people there and they really didn't like the feel of the place. And he said, we're going to have to go back and investigate it. So I said, yeah, all right, then we'll go. And we went one night and we'd, we'd got all through the, uh, all the bushes. It was, it was really overgrown. Yeah, yeah. Simon, the... Simon nearly, we ne I nearly lost Simon because the mud was that deep that he stepped in oh, and he's just stunk and I thought I was going to have to drag him out. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, it, I mean, it's just the uh, things you have happen. It's, it can be yeah. hilarious, really. Yeah. Penciling through him. <laughs> and uh, we, we then decided to do an ITC session once we'd got in and... Um, We'd, we was calling out and stuff, and it just took a really dark turn in there. You know, when your echoes go up and you feel edgy and yeah, just, you don't feel like you're on, on your own here. And the ITC weren't really producing anything much, but we could hear sounds and bangs and stuff. And we, we kind of debunked it as wildlife, you know, as you do. Yeah. And we're taking um, temperature spots, and, and I happen to say, okay, if somebody is here... Because I was faced, I was sat there, and in, in the uh, window was just behind me. And I said, "If somebody is here, I want you to run from this window all the way around the building, and I want to hear you." And it actually did. <laughs> <laughs> it actually did. <laughs> and we was just that we we got up, and it was on camera as well. But you can't really hear it that well on the camera. Right. And uh, luckily, I'd got the thermal Im imager in my hand. Yeah, so yeah. we quickly rushed over, you know, to see if it was wildlife. So we quickly scanned the yeah, area yeah. for wildlife and there was nothing. There was no um, red areas suggesting that any wildlife was in there. Yeah. Um, and if it wasn't so overgrown as it was, I would have actually said it was a person. It was yeah. that loud and ran all the way around so loudly that uh, if I could say I would have said it was a person, but there was no way a person could have got through them bushes without us seeing or seeing oh. them or them tripping over or anything. That's but right, yeah. wow. it, it did. And, and we, it that did, um, <laughs> it did, that did shake me up a bit. Yeah. That was yeah. one time that I did get sh like a shake and I must go back actually, because it is a really good spot to, to investigate. Yeah. But that's a good thing, but isn't sometimes, it? Sometimes the locations that, that you think, that's not really investigated, not really known about. They can, like I say, can produce the best and, and personal experience as well, as well as on camera. You know, sometimes I like oh, to I just turn the camera off and just yeah, yeah. say, I mean, come on then. <laughs> well, yeah. the camera's off. <laughs> I've, went, I've been to, uh, I went to Pembroke, Pembrokeshire in, in Wales uh, and there's Pembroke Castle, which is right next to the coast. Uh, there, I don't know where mm -hmm. you um, No. And I, when, and that was when I was with um, Oxford and Berkshire Paranormal Research uh, when I was with the team because I was with the team uh, and then we obviously we, we split up just after like five months and I thought you know I would love to go on my own but but when I was back back with them when we were a team uh, I remember we did there uh, I think it was back one Halloween um, time we actually uh, were in one of the areas uh, within the castle itself and um, I don't know whether this has ever happened to you but but um, I actually had stones uh, thrown, I mean, multiple stones um, thrown mm. at me by an unseen force, um, which again, uh, did scare me at the time and it did scare mm. the other investigators because we were all accounted for. 
Uh, yeah. I was just, you know, and the direction that these stones came, it, it, you know, it didn't hit us. It just was kind of next to us here, but <laughs> we, we were there for about an hour thinking, you know, what, where, where did it come from? <laughs> where did these stones come from? I mean, we asked, we asked for it. We asked for spirit because what we did, uh, you know, we grabbed like a, a, a big stone and we threw it. We said, oh, uh, to ask the spirits to throw it back. But it did, but it was multiple stones. And it, <laughs> and it but, but, we, but we were there for about an hour or, or, or an, and a bit, just trying to work out where these stones actually come from. Um, and when you've, mm -hmm. when you've got that, you just, it, it, it does, it just messes with you, doesn't it? It does. And, and you go back of an, of an eye or a morning and you just lay in bed and you think, did that really happen? You know, did it, you know? And you can't sleep because it's like it gives you that buzz, don't it? And it makes you want to go and explore it more, I think. And you can have 10 investigations where nothing happens. I mean, it can take one investigation like that and you get that bug back and you get that passion back. And I think it, you just then think, oh, I've got to go out again, you know, and it, it kickstarts it all again, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, um, Charlie, uh, when, you, when, when you actually got an investigations as well, and I, I think it's very important that... The group that, that that you go with, do you think that it, that it is very important that that people are on on the same wavelength? Uh, yeah, and what I'm definitely. Saying is that um, you you need to be open um, to the spirits uh, and be respectful to the spirits as well, mm -hmm. so that they will um, come forward to you and, and that they will communicate with you. Do, do you think that's an important thing? And if there is someone there, I mean. There are many public ghost hunts that I've been on, and I've sp I've spoke with previous guests, you know, that, that have joined me on my show. That um, it only takes um, the one person who's a skeptic and totally, you know, doesn't believe in any of it. It, it, it can kind of spoil the investigation when you're doing it, kind of. I think it can, yeah. It can put it can if people aren't open minded. I have to ask why are they going really? Um, it, I think you've got to be open-minded to, to do it. And, yeah, you do have to be on the same wavelength. And you not necessarily everybody has to have the same beliefs as such, but that everyone has to be slightly and, and open-minded with it, with it. And, I mean, we always have a giggle on investigations. And we, I always find that if we have a giggle, it tends to charge that energy up. Yes, you know? oh, yes. And you have a bit of a banter and yeah, and, and things do then tend to happen more. And I do think that is a great energy builder. Mm -hmm. And obviously you've got to, you've got to uh, have a good group of people to go with, to have that banter with. So you've got to feel comfortable in that environment and you, to, to do that. And I think it can all impact on your investigation. Like you say, it can take one person to come and they, they may put a bit of a damper on it and it tends to be that the, the night's more quieter it does yeah. tend to happen like that yeah mm. yeah i mean the next question is going to be a good one because um it's kind of like um like i say what what we're all looking for um charlene is um have you ever seen a full bodied uh ghostly apparition no <laughs> <laughs> no I, I well I'm actually a bit I am a sensitive so what, what I say by sensitive I mean that I I can I've got a good intuition I would say that's how I I call it and sometimes right. I can go places and I get like a knowing that something's there and I can explain it and you know it, it can relate to what's been spotted there before and then I only normally really say if I'm an actual I feel myself that I am an actual, actually 100% on it. I, I do tend to keep that side of me quite quiet, really. Um, but, yeah, I think... So I'd, I've looked around before and, and I've seen glimpses of things, okay? and um, But I've never actually seen... I, to go into somewhere and just see a full body, you know, physical body. Because obviously when, when a sensitive sees, they can see what I would say through the mind's eye. So they can see a figure in, in the mind's eye of a person and then they'll say it and see if it can relate to the hauntings that are there. But it's different having something physical there like you and I. 
in front of you because that's that's your hundred percent proof and isn't it you know that's yeah. what I think anyway yeah. yeah but I haven't and and I, I was thinking earlier if I actually ever did would I stop and I still wouldn't I still yeah. wouldn't I mean <laughs> because I think it would want me to search a bit more you know um it's like I say it's getting that that bug yeah um, oh, cool. Course and then to see that you'd want to explore it more and think well the, you do definitely know now that there is something and yeah i mean obviously, obviously the next question that i'm going to say i mean it's got to have happened to um quite a lot because it, it's happened to me have you ever been um touched by a spirit um i have uh and it was in the most unexpected place ever uh i wasn't even on an investigation um we went to because i mean my parents live over in Devon. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Devon, uh, in Paynton. Uh, and there's a pub there called The Spinning Wheel. And uh, it's a very musical pub. Uh, they have quite a lot of live music uh, over the weekends. And uh, my best friend, Stuart, uh, who's an investigator, uh, who comes out with me on, on a lot of investigations that, 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 that we do. Um, I remember it re re as if it was just... I was coming down a, a, a spiral staircase. It was a very old staircase. I mean, I don't even know how old this pub was, but, um, and it was just me and Stuart. Stuart was in front of me, I was behind him. Uh, and we were walking, obviously, down. I got down to about the last three, four steps. And it, I, it just felt as though that a hand had touched my bum. And I turned around and I was like, and there was nobody there. It was, it was, it was strange, it, it, it was bizarre. Yeah, and and that. that's that's what yeah that's what happened to me at the chalk chalk works as well. I've got touched right. on my ball match. Yeah, right, yeah. It's always got to be, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah. I'd 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 got touched there, and it just kind of whoa, you know. You think just... am I think, thinking it or have I actually been touched or what? Yeah. But uh, yeah. It's crazy, isn't it? It's yeah. Crazy. I mean, I. Other things as well, like say if it's around your head, obviously uh, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of these places have got cobweb spiders and, and all kinds of things there, or wires and that, and you can mistake it for that. But um, but but when it does happen, uh, <laughs> it's quite it's quite terrifying. Um, it is, it is, and I'm sure if Simon is watching this, he can vouch for me because I was like, whoa, you know, <laughs> and he's like, are you all right? And I'm like, yeah, and, <laughs> yeah. and I'm like, I've just been touched. <laughs> he went, are you sure? And I went, I have, and he went, well, it won't want me, and I said, well, I know it won't you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, but, but um, yeah, it's the uh, yeah, it's it's it's, it's, unusual. it's weird, isn't it? It's weird. Mm. Next question. Uh, and I know that you sent a message. Do you collect haunted items? Yeah, so go over in the back. Can you see them? Oh, oh yeah, I can just yeah, just about okay. Because <laughs> this is this is actually my museum. So oh, right, okay. Oh wow. So yeah. And that what is it? Paintings so and uh, uh, haunted dolls and stuff like that. Do you collect? Yes, yes. Well, I've been given a lot actually. Um, this doll here. I was given that by a team and they didn't want it in the house. They'd got it from, from America, right. um, from, from a family and they bought, it, it came and it was in the kitchen and they was upstairs and apparently it just set a light on fire. And I went to pick up a spirit box from them that I'd bought off, um, off eBay because I do, yeah. did know him. And they said, you collect items, don't you? And I said, yes. And they said, I want you to have something. We don't want it. I went, okay, well, what is it? And then it's it's wrapped in a bag and we don't want to open it and show you all out. Steve will show you outside. I went, oh, okay. So he goes outside and he unwraps the top of it. It's a burnt right. doll. It's, right. <laughs> it's a burnt doll. It's set, it's set in flames in our, in our kitchen and we've been keeping it in the attic. So do you, do you want it? And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I love it. <laughs> so... I've not experienced anything with it why why it's been here. Um but apparently the little girl who had it it was speaking to her and things and and the grandma it was it was making quite poorly as well. Oh right. So yeah, yeah. They, they sent it to a team over here. Right. And they got it and said it set a light and they didn't want it. So Have you had any um have you had any strange uh, experiences since you've had the possession of, uh, of of the doll itself? 
Um, no, I haven't. I will okay. admit, I haven't. Right, okay. So, um, I don't know if it being set alight has stopped any kind of haunting there or or anything like that, but I haven't had a thing since I've okay. had it. Uh, have you done any experiments uh, with it as well, like, like Ouija board work with it at all to see if, the, if you can... I do do ITC in here, yes. Um, and I, I've not had, no, I've not had a thing. It's been very, very quiet with it. Yeah, so... yeah it's strange because um, because I, I recently brought um, a, a supposedly haunted doll uh, from eBay. I know a lot of people do. Um, but things things have happened, but but I don't know whether it's it's just the fact that, that it's just bad luck on, I, on my side of it. But um, there are things that, you know, uh, experiments that I've done with the dollar, you know, and I had Ouija board sessions with it and stuff. And again, I I, I've, I haven't had anything, to, um, co- you know, come through through it because obviously uh, a young girl's spirit is supposed to be attached to this paisley doll. Uh, it's only a tiny uh, tiny doll, but um, and, and it was in Prague, I think, uh, abroad. Uh, it was it was bought off a marketplace, and um, they said that this doll was obviously um, in, a, in in a house. Uh, in a fire, uh, if you try to put a match to it, uh, she just won't burn. Uh, apparently, okay. uh, I- I've obviously not not been thinking about doing it, but um, why not? Yeah. <laughs> I-, I once burnt a uh, uh, crying boy, yeah, picture yeah. to right. experiment to see if it would burn, and right. it did burn, but it took some burning. We chucked loads of fire um, light and stuff on it to get it burned in. So it would be interesting for you to try just to see. Yeah. I mean, yeah, obviously but, you're going to have a burnt doll at the end of it, but. But but, but there are things, I mean, I, I, I've had like spirit mediums and, and stuff, uh, obviously sense things from the doll uh, that, that I've had. And they've come up with some interesting things. I mean, there, there, was, there was one lady that picked up the, the, the doll. Um, that I've got, uh, she won't stand up uh, f- for some reason, um, which is bizarre. But but there again, the medium didn't know that, uh, and she picked up on it, and I thought that was quite impressive. And she said about there was an actual mark uh, on the doll as well, like a like a burn or a scorch mark on the actual mm-hmm. doll itself, which I've not looked at yet. But yeah, it's, I'm not saying there isn't. I mean, it might be there, and if it is there, yeah. you know, it's gonna it's gonna shock me a little bit. But um, but, but yeah, you know, there were certain dates uh, that, that came through on the Ouija board session uh, that the previous owners, uh, uh, who, who owned the doll before I did, uh, and then they're obviously getting dates uh, saying that, 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 a, that, a, uh, that a young girl is associated with, with the doll. So I do find it, I do find it quite interesting, uh, especially with, with haunted items. And I know that hauntings, uh, I'm a believer, um, the hauntings and spirits can get attached to all, all these things, don't you think? Oh yeah, yes, definitely, because it's it's literally the same as a location. I see it, you know. And if a person looks after something in life, then why why won't they in death, you know? And I don't think a spirit lives in an item. I just think a spirit would be around that item and protect it you know say say for instance if you grew up with a teddy bear that your mum gave you and you always had that teddy bear even through all your life and then you pass away and that teddy bear goes to you goes to your family but it ends up in a shop somewhere in a charity shop and and you you're around it still which I think you can draw on that energy, you know, on, on items, then if you protected it in life and looked after it in life, you're going to want to see it protected in death, I think. Yeah, yeah. That's I'll my do. logic on on yeah. items. I mean, there is obviously obviously other items, which I think is such like, well, I've got a debug box as well, which is oh, here. Yeah, that'd be great if you could, um... all right, yes. Okay. Yeah. Um see with the debug box that wouldn't be a item that um somebody would necessarily protect that would be that's the likelihood of that would be that it's had some kind of witchcraft maybe done on it you know to summon something to it or around it 
so no one's guarding guarding that as such it's it's been summoned to that right yeah yeah Mm. so we're talking witchcraft and stuff like that yeah the darker and the court which i think yeah i think um if if an item maybe have had has had something practiced on like that i think that also could potentially stir energy and i don't i wouldn't say that it, that's got you know lucifer in there but it's had bad craft done on it yeah and bad energies and stuff can actually yeah. come out and, 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 and if you start exploring that then you may get bad results and bad <laughs> things yeah. come through yeah. you know so yeah i mean that barks that's that has, has, has had some interesting things happen. I mean, I got that box from another team, actually. But I did actually pay for that one. But it wasn't as much as what, what people think mm. it probably would be. It was quite cheap. And I got it and I took it back home. And I put it on the table. And my father-in-law was messing about with it, knocking on it. And... It knocks within it. Something knocked within the box. Okay. Oh, wow. I got that on footage as well. You can okay. hear it knock. All right. Um, and then we... It was then put on a live. And we did a... Our TC was run with it. And the person that was live with it knocked on it. And said, knock, knock. And, um, no, the IT, yeah, he knocked on it and the ITC said, knock, knock. And he went, who's there? And he went, nobody. And then a bit later on, on the live, the ITC said again, knock, knock, you know, and it was really dark and really sinister how how it was coming across. And then a few weeks ago, because I'd not worked with it for a while, and I, I, I come in here quite regular, doing bits and bobs and experimenting with them and stuff. And I come in here and I've noticed it's got a stain on it. Um, I don't know if you, cause I can't, got, might not be able to see it, but I've I'll posted it up on page. Yeah. But it, it's, I come in and, like I say, I come in every day and, and it's, nothing's happened with it or anything. And I come in this specific day and it's got like um, water stains all the way down it like it's wet through. Do you know like when wood's like wet and it's, yeah. it's yeah. lines all the way down it? Okay. And I felt it. I mean, it's been in here, so there's no water that can get in here or anything like that. And I felt it, and it's not wet, but it's got this massive stain down it. So okay. I think I thought, right, I'm going to do another ITC with it and see what, what happens with it. And, and it had actually said about me not working with it for a while. And the footage is also of that is on my page okay. and why I'd not worked with it for a while because there was a reason for me not working with it. And it was really interesting. And so, mm. yeah, it, and it was, yeah, even to the point, because I was going to open it, it's got stuff in it as well. And oh, it's okay. really heavy. And if you yeah. shake it, it's really, really heavy. Oh, and wow. it, the ITC was going in and we asked, what day would you like to be opened? And it said the 23rd of September. Right. Instant, instant reply, yeah. 23rd of September. Now, if you look at the background history of the 23rd of September, well, a lot of cultures and religions believe that Armageddon comes on, on the 23rd. I mean, every year there is some kind of religion somewhere or someone thinks the world's going to end, you know, on the 23rd of September. Yeah. So for it to say that, and with it being what kind of box it is as well. Um, yeah, it's quite incredible. It was quite interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, obviously, um, you, said, you said that you did a, 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 a Sky TV show back in 2016. Um, what was yes, that? Yes, I did. That was with um, Project Paranormal. I was part okay. of... Um, the team project paranormal then and we self-funded to go on to showcase tv and we actually it actually got to the top 10 i think it was um paranormal show right of that year Mm. 
Oh, and we sweet. investigated a pub in Scotland and we had some really interesting results from that pub for that for that episode. We was we was really quite chuffed with what, what we'd got with it, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. It's that yeah, it was two years ago this Halloween. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Is there, is there any more plans um, for you to do any more TV work, or, or, or is that not? A lot what you will see, as in paranormal team-wise on Facebook, they are self-funded. They've yeah. got no contract. Right. They're self-funded, from yeah, yeah. and they pay showcase. Anyone, any team can get onto showcase. Um, it's six hundred pounds for half an hour, and it's a thousand pounds for an hour. So you know, if you want to go on to Sky TV, you know, Google um, okay showcase, and you can get on it. Yeah. But at the minute, I find that people don't watch a lot of TV nowadays, do they? Really, I think a lot of people are on Facebook. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. Yeah, because I mean, it's live. It's there, and it's yeah. instant. As on TV, yeah. all pre-recorded stuff. Um, yeah, and I, I think the audience really now is on Facebook, and I think to to spend six hundred pound on an half an hour episode, yeah, you just not probably really, get you? to probably get what max two thousand people watch it on a showcase when you could go live from your page, and if people want to watch you on there, and probably get ten thousand people watch it. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit can... of a waste of money, really, isn't it? Yeah, of course it is. Of course it is. I mean, I mean, and I mean, I people... YouTube, YouTube is a good thing because it's worldwide. Uh, yeah. And a lot of people from Australia or America or get get America. I mean, blimey, if you get a, a lot of people in America watching your um, watching your shows, it, it it can only be a good thing, can't it? Yeah, I mean, obviously, people do like to go on onto the, and get the sky badge, and it's nice to have that badge to say, yeah, you know, I've been on TV, so I can completely understand if people want to do that. I just think um, nowadays is TV really the way? Mm. Do how many people actually sit down at night and really watch the TV? Don't they spend more time on Facebook? Yeah, I would cool. say that maybe they do. Yeah. Or watching YouTube, like you say, so. It's nice to have the tag of TV, but you can you can put your work on your Facebook and and have more people probably watch it. Yeah, 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 and and it's all and it and it's all you know my my stuff's one hundred percent genuine. You know uh, the things that I put um, on investigations that I do, yeah, you know, it's, it's genuine. But there again, it, uh, with a lot of the TV shows um, nowadays, um, they're team based. That that there, there are a lot of people. <laughs> behind the scenes uh which which we don't oh, see oh yeah um, there's a production and, who, and you know who's who to say no one's throwing something or or, or or no one's causing these things to happen you know i'm mm. not meant not mention any any but you know no. you know, <laughs> i know you mean <laughs> you don't know about, but, um, no but I, yeah, they've, they've got They've got a production team behind them. And this is where self-funding is good. Because if you self-fund your, your programme to go onto the TV, you know what you are putting on. You yeah. know, you've not got that production team. So you paying that money is worth it in that respect because you know what's going on there. And no one's saying, oh, you've got to have this, you've got to have that. Because statistically, TV shows do have to have, I think, is it 5 to 10% activity for an episode to be aired? So right. how they get that activity they're just told you you need some somewhere to happen of course you, do. you know there's a there's a there's a pressure on them with a production team isn't there and it's not right no it's no, not right because it don't show the field in its true true light no, that's right it doesn't do but, it. um because it, cause no, it, cause it, it can get frustrating i mean i know uh, people that are watching that have been on ghost Hunts, you can go to the most hauntedest places um i mean i mean I, i've been to the ancient ram in uh, I've been a few times, um, and you'd think the ancient ram in, you know, it's got a pretty good it's, reputation of being one yeah. of the. <laughs> I spent seven, eight hours there, um, Charlie, and I had absolutely nothing. Same for me. I, I've been to the ram, and I, it it was freezing to start off with. I've never been so 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 somewhere that's been so cold. I don't know if you found that, Mark. No, no, yeah. It was just absolutely freezing. 
any out of any of all the outside locations I've been to, that was the one thing that stuck to mind how cold it was. No, no, but, it's, but it's, apart funny from... it's funny you should mention that because I, the yeah, the first time uh, when I went, um, and it, and it wasn't even like in the winter; it was kind of like in this coming springtime into the summer, and. Mm. Well, he's like, I, I had the chills. I, I was freezing. You know, I, I had a t-shirt and, and a top on. But I know, I, I know, I can understand what what you're saying. It is quite a cold, chilly place, isn't it? To be at it, when you're it really up. is. It's like I say, it's colder than any place, even outside. I've investigated in in the mid of winter. Mm. So I do give it that. It has got that the coldness about it. It's really strange. But apart from that, nothing else happened. No, not uh, a thing. Yeah. And, uh, uh, so quiet. I, I, and it's like a medium said to me about uh, about ghost hunting. Uh, it's it's like fishing. Uh, if you're into fishing, uh, and you get your rod, uh, you, you you throw your you know your line out and stuff, and you're just waiting there for a bite. Uh, <laughs> you don't get anything uh, sometimes. When you, and that's that could be the same thing with ghost hunting, can't it? You, you've just got to be patient. Uh, approach it, uh, you know, within the right way. Mm. Uh, and if you do, uh, and you're respectful um, to the spirits that are there, treat them as though, uh, obviously, when they're alive, you treat it because they passed over. You, 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 you still treat them the same. Uh, and I think mm. you'd obviously get a response then, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. And like you say, and then what happens is that that people watch these TV programmes with all this activity happening, and they expect that to happen when you go on an event or come with you. They expect, you know, chairs flying and knives coming out of everywhere and being dragged down the stairs and and stuff. And then when it don't happen, it's like, oh, yeah. oh, it's that. It's because it don't really happen like that. <laughs> it don't <laughs> happen like that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but um, obviously, um, um, public events. Um, that I know that I go on. They they can get they can get quite expensive, can't they? Uh, mm. And I think uh, a good thing is now, like like we, like, like we said earlier on in the show, uh, if you've got like a, a lot of paranormal teams um, that can come together, um, you know, and then go into the investigation, it's a lot. Mm. It's a lot cheaper, isn't it? If it, if it's done uh, that way. Well, th well, that's what we're doing at the minute. Um, uh, and we're grouping up together and we're paying for locations um, and and doing it like that, where there is no public, but there is just investigators there. So it, it's the only way, really, because some are so expensive, aren't they? Oh, God, yes, you know? yes. You know, I mean, it's, it's nearly like uh, some of the companies, I mean, like 65, 70 pounds, um, for for a ticket per person, yeah, uh, and you think, wow, you know, that, it's a lot of money for just six hours or seven hours investigating uh, a location. Um, it is. I, I mean, I used to pay it though. I did used to pay it because when I first started, yeah, um, because I did enjoy it, and then I went more private. So I don't really do a lot of public events. It's, now and again, I might go to a public event, but it's not very often nowadays. I'm more into the more private um, investigating and, and yeah. things like that. Have you yeah. actually, Charlene, have you actually done, um, have you done uh, many private investigations, as in families that are experiencing haunted happenings? Um, have you done that in the past? Um, as in private houses? Yeah, as as in uh, obviously people are obviously calling out for help because they're obviously having strange things happening in the house, and, uh, and you, uh, you and your team obviously go in and, and see and see what it's all about. Well, I have before, yes. Um, I, 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 the, the lot that I get from the page now, um, they don't. They tend to want you to come round, and then you kind of you kind of arrange it, and then they kind of pull out at, at the last minute. And I don't know why they do that, um, but I find that happens a lot. Oh, okay. Um, but I have gone round, and I have, you know, tried to help people before now. But it's it's been a long time um, that I've done a private house. What I do tend to get a lot of is is family and friends who have lost relatives and just lost relatives tend to come round and and ask me 
for a confirmation, which is what I get a lot of. Yeah. Um, and I do do try to try and say that they might not come through. Uh, it's not guaranteed. You know, you can't can't promise you make what you what you want of it. Um, but I have provided some comfort in in some some of them cases that that I've had. Um, yeah. who've people who've, who've lost people who've lost people suddenly mm. and they just want to say bye yeah yeah um i've had a lot lot of them recently okay okay yeah because uh, i mean uh, me and Stuart actually because uh, uh, you're from are you, you, you're from nottingham i am yeah yeah um me, me me and my friend Stuart, uh we did an investigation uh towards the end of september um, and it was uh, one of his relatives' house, and she lives uh, in Nottingham. Um, mm-hmm. And they had uh, some pretty uh, scary stuff. You know, they, they they saw an apparition, or they believe there's an apparition of a young girl uh, within the house mm-hmm. uh, on the lower levels of the house, and then the higher levels of the house. They say that they've seen, or or the younger children that have been there have seen an elderly lady um, in the house as well as, and. They seem to believe that obviously when when the two meet within the middle, obviously where the where the actual staircase is, that's when mm-hmm. things just completely go crazy. And uh, uh, so of course, obviously me me and Stu thought, yeah, you know, we will go and do this investigation. Um, we will go and see um, what we get. Um, so obviously me and Stu, we got there. Um, his, his niece said, oh, you know, he told us where the where the hot spots were, where they were hearing loud bangs. Um, they were hearing. Um, footsteps going up, the, going up the stairs and a lot of banging upstairs and stuff like that and um and pretty much we, we we were there for about seven seven to eight hours and we completely got nothing it, it was absolutely nothing now, i'm not saying that the, that the place was obviously not haunted but but my belief is uh, and what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that um i believe that, that the spirits that are haunting the house may be associated with the family itself so yes. because because the family wasn't there, uh, <clears throat> the I, I haunting think wasn't the, there. The hauntings wasn't there, but when the family are there, they say that on, on a regular basis, um, you know, they see shadows, they they hear a lot of things. Um, furniture gets moved around uh, a lot, so I think you know, to me, me and Stuart, I've obviously got to go back again, but but mm-hmm. but, but we want the family to be with us. At the time, that's that's a good move. That's a good move because yeah. I think things can happen in private houses, and because it's it's the fear of the unknown, isn't it? So they're having this happen, and they th- automatically think, "Oh my God, we've got a poltergeist," you know. And they think worst case scenario: we need we need to stage the house, we need to cleanse it, we need to get a priest in. That's what you tend to, to you know hear a lot when people are experiencing really bad activity but like you say it could be just the family just saying hello you know i'm okay but yeah. just giving you a sign yeah kind yeah. of thing it it, it it could be because i mean it's, um, happening, it's happening to them on a, a, pretty much on a daily basis that, that there are things uh, I, I think um stuart's niece's uh, father uh, came back one day. Uh, he had some letters. Uh, he took out the uh, uh, the letter box, put them on the side, went into the kitchen, made a cup of tea, come back, and all these letters were just strung all over the floor, you know. Uh, and, he, and, he, and he quite he's quite an elderly chap. Uh, his head's on his shoulders. He probably doesn't believe in ghosts or anything like that. But but this is a, this is a genuine thing that's come from a genuine guy who said that this this did happen to him. Mm. Now mm. I was well, okay, you know. But the, but the family, I don't know whether the family were there at a time when that happened. But mm. because Stuart went there on our own, maybe the spirits that were there that, that are haunting this house are thinking, these are two strangers we don't know. Mm. So we're not going to interact with them. No, no, no. You know, no matter how many times that they call out or what experiments that, that, that they do, we just not doing it because we just don't know who you are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Strong believer mm-hmm. of that. I really, I really do yeah. that. You know, believe that that's that's the case um, that we've got to do. So we've we've definitely um, we've definitely got to go back there at, at, at some point. Um, and sounds, to, yeah. To do it because it sounds 
very, very interesting. One last thing that I would like to ask you, because I know time has just got completely over, but it's been absolutely... <laughs> <That's> it. <laughs> it really has. It's been uh, uh, ripping stuff tonight, uh, especially for the last. <laughs> um, you, you obviously... I, you actually say that you're an author as well. Are you actually writing a book about, about the paranormal at the moment? I, I wrote a book last November, um, and that's just general haunting hauntings magazine as well oh, so the digit it's free dig online digital magazine and um, i started that last december so it's coming up to a year it's it's been going for nearly i've got this be my fourth issue and it will be out on the 26th of october and it's the halloween edition right, that okay. i've done yeah. And that's available to free online to read on free on Google Play, right. and if people do want an hard copy, I do sell a hard copy as well. But I don't tend to push it on people. The free one is there yeah, for them yeah. to read, but um, if they but want want a printed one, copy. they can. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, there is an actual link as well that, that, that you can get onto the magazine as well. Would that yeah, be? A yeah. Would that be okay, Shani, if you could put the link on, on the actual chat comments um, so that people yeah. can go and, look and, go and, and go and take a look at, at it? And if, if you go onto my website and subscribe onto my website, when it comes out, if you, all you've got to do is go scroll to the end of my website and enter your email. So any blogs I write or any um, the latest issues of the mag, it will email you to say that it, it's, it's, okay. Okay. it's been yeah, issued. Yeah, but it sounds, it sounds fantastic. Look, again, thank you ever so much for, for coming on tonight. It, it, it's been absolutely amazing having you on. I, I, I really do appreciate it. And um, Thank you for having me. Uh, if you do get any um, interesting places uh, coming up, give us a shout, because uh, I want to be a busy man next year, because I'm going to be doing more, <laughs> more, more, more um, investigating. Well, well, I mean, I'm, I'm stacked out till, till December. I've got, I mean, this weekend I'm in Scotland. Oh, but, right, um, wow. Okay. Mary Queen's of Scots House. Oh, investigating wow. that. Wow. So we'll be live on Saturday night um, investigating okay. there. Yeah, that sounds so, good. So you're welcome to come, Mark. Yeah, you yeah. Know, come. <laughs> come on and uh, explore yeah. with us one time. Yeah. But if you're doing some lives there, please, um, which I'm assuming that you can, if, if the yeah. signal is pretty good. Uh, if you do, mm -hmm. by all means, share it on my page. I mean, I, I have told, obviously, past guests uh, that have been on, if you're doing any, any lives, that's what my page is all about. It's obviously about sharing uh, so we so yeah. we can all interact and, uh, and, and and get involved. But thank you ever so much, Charlene, for, uh, for being on. Um, it's been a real pleasure and uh, all the best for the future. I hope to see you uh, very soon. All right. And you. See you, Mark. Okay. All right. Take care Bye. now. Bye.